Hello, today we start with chapter 4. And chapter 4 is talking about equilibrium of a rigid body. So this is what we have mentioned before. What needs to happen to make it stay in equilibrium is that the summation of forces in X and the summation of forces in Y is equal to zero. This expression is going to give us an equation or a set of equations in X and Y and Z. And that will let us find the forces that uh, the problem is asking or the design requires. In this picture, for instance, there is going to be a weight um, because of the components that are attached to the structure. Um, and the, or the whole structure itself is going to have a weight on the bridge. So it really depends on what you consider as your system. And then when you do summation of forces in X and Y, you can find the forces that you are looking for. So in this case, for example, we have um, force in this direction and a force in this direction. So the components can be found in X and Y. Okay, the same case goes for moments. So we have, let's say in three dimensions, X, Y, and Z. We're gonna have summation of forces in X, summation of forces in Y, summation of forces in Z, and summation of moments around a given point. All this is equal to zero in order to have a static equilibrium. Okay, so let's look at this free body diagram. There's a weight. So this right here is a force going down by a weight. And the weight is given by the mass times the gravity. This is sorry the force is given by the mass times the gravity this is the mass then that force is making it deform and telling us that there's still two types of there's two uh, connections here one that is completely fixed this connection is characterized as a force in x and a force in y So that is F A Y F X A and a roller. So this is just a support. So this is going to be a, a force in X and Y. You can move with certain friction. So since you can move with friction, this is not zero anymore. Is um, it's dynamic. Therefore, we don't, therefore we don't con uh, consider that force right there. Just the force in X. Okay, so we're just asking for the body diagram, and of course, there's going to be a moment, but they're not asking us for the moment at any point. So if they ask for the moment at B, there's a moment because of this force, and if they ask um, because of the force at uh, at the moment at A, we can also consider that moment. In this case, they're asking us, they're telling us that there's another force because of the arm, which is true. This force also exists. In fact, that's why they gave us this distance right here. So, the weight of the structure is very important. In fact, this structure by itself without any weight at the end can cause um, you can get a, a failure in your supports. This can fall just by, because of the weight of the structure. This is usually metal, so it could be pretty heavy. The thing though is that um, this is telling us that it's 9.81 kilonewtons. Therefore, it seems like they're telling us that this is a mass of a, of a thousand um, let's see, how come they know 
what that is. Well, I'm not quite sure. Some information here is missing. I'm not quite sure how they know it's nine point. They didn't give us the mass of the structure, do they? But we can know that the mass of the structure is a thousand um, kilograms because times 9.8 we get 9.1 kilo newtons or sorry one yeah so in order to the, for this to be the force of force because of the crane let's say this is going to be the mass times the gravity and we have that is 9810 newtons because it's 9.8 kilo newtons this is equal to the mass times the gravity. Yeah, and the gravity is 9.81. So it's a thousand um, kilograms. Just divide 9810 or 9810 9, divided by 9.81 um, meters per second squared. And we can find the mass in kilograms. So this is what we talked about type of reactions. So you have a roller. This roller is only given uh, force in Y because you cannot go into the ground. All these things are the same. All that is, all those things are the same. And if it's in the X direction, it will be exactly the same. It's just like the example above. If the roller is like this, then it's only one force. That's all you have to, to know. Okay. The link is also one force and is in the direction of the, of the link. And a cable would be like a link. It's in tension. And also pins and colors will be similar it will be just one force fixed which they don't have it here let's see if they have it above yeah fixed is when you have two um forces so this is soldered or welded or attached to the ground so here you have two forces indeed and here if it's a, if the toes is a rough surface then it's very high friction then you consider this as a two forces as well. You consider it fixed. If you have um, fixed support, but it's like inserted in the ground, for instance, in this case, for instance, you can move. See, you can move like this because there's a pin. If it's inserted, um, if this is welded, and this is you have no way of moving the structure if it, the only way for me the only way for this to move is because of a bending of the part itself then in this case you have the two forces and a moment all right that's called the fixed support this one above with no moment is called the rough surface or the hinge so let us look at this example. They're asking for the free body diagram. Very nice. So they're already giving us the forces. So let's say it's X and Y. Okay. And X is positive um, on the horizontal plane or yeah, the, going that way horizontally and Y is positive going vertically. It really doesn't matter where is X and Y right here. We can say we can even put it right here if we want because at this point we're not doing any force calculation we just want to do the body diagram so we have we have let's see if i can do the structure somewhat nicely structure structure is fixed to the ground and then there's a cable supporting the structure with respect to the ground. Okay, so we have negative force going down. Another one, because there's four, four of them. Then this is supported with 
fx and fy. Since it's fixed, there's a moment. It's probably going this way. I don't know. Uh, now, where to put the force? The force, why they're actually telling you, is at the pin. The force is with respect to the fixed point of the ground. So this is the force of, of tension, I say. This is the tension. So we have force, two, four, we have one, two, three, four forces of 20 kilonewtons each. And then we have the support of the fixed structure and attention because of the cable. Okay, let's see what they show us. Yeah, so they're asking which one is the correct one. The correct one should be, well, we, let's, let's go ahead and see. This one is showing a force, two, three, four of them, correct? Showing the forces X and Y at the moment because of the fixed point, and then a force here at point B. But even though it's true that point B is seeing a force, the system is in equilibrium because of the point B. So this is not it. This is not it because it's basically if you're analyzing the cable by itself this is how you do it but we're doing the whole structure so this is not it and this is not true because if you say that this is 150 150 then obviously you have 150 there this one is missing it so it's b yep there you go we have b is the answer okay so what about this one so we have a rigid body that has a fixed point and a roller. So we have to know what is the force in Z and moment in X and Y and Z. All right, so which one are they talking about here? Fx, F, uh, yep, correct. So this is X and this is Y. So as we know, this force right here is in the first quad quadrant. So it has a component in X, and X, and X, and a negative component in Y. Yeah. Then the structure has a weight because it's of metal. This is fixed. And this is a roller. Okay, so um, you can find the moment at A, a moment at B, and a moment of yeah, okay. So let's say, for instance, if you want to do the moment at A, the moment at A will cancel. There's no distance between A, Y, and A. There's no distance between A, X, and A. But there is a distance between W and A, so there's a moment here because of W. Um, there's a distance between B and A, so there's another distance here. And that's the same distance from SY. QY has the same distance as W. And SX, QX, and PX have the same distance, which is this. So you can have a moment because of that uh, D1, D2, and L. QPY is across, is passing across the point. So there's no perpendicular distance. There's no moment because of PY. All right, so, oh, there you go. So this is the example that we were talking about. They're telling us that, yep, a mass of 1,000 kilograms in, is lifting 24 kilograms. Um, it's held at place at P, A, and B. Okay, determine the components of the reaction at A and B. Okay, so we already know how to do this. So summation of forces and X, summation of forces and Y equals zero. Let me go ahead and see where they have comments so I don't write on top of them. Okay, so I can write on top of this part. So, um, actually, let's use the body diagram here that we already did. As we know, this is a fixed point. So we have xy, ax, and ay. There's a distance of 1.5 between a and b. And b is a ruler, so there's only a bx. Then they tell us the center of gravity of the crane, which is a two meters. So that's what we call a force. Remember this force is equal to mass times gravity and 2,400 is the mass of the weight. So 2,400 times 9.8 is the force. 
and they're asking us to the co components of the reaction side A and B. So which forces do we have here? Let's start with X. So AX plus BX equals to zero because we don't have anything else in X. Summation of forces in X. Summation of forces in Y. We have AY positive minus 9.181 kilonewtons minus 23.5 equals to zero. That is, so we can find AY. So AY is 23.5 plus 9.88. So AY is equal to, this is 32.5, and 33.3, right? 23.5 plus 9.81. So 23.5 plus 9 is 32.5, and 0.8 is 33.31. That is 33.31. Um, kilonewtons is positive. So this force is holding that much magnitude, 33.31 kilonewtons. Okay, to find AX and BX, we have to use the moment. So the components of the reactions, they don't tell us to do the moments, but let's say we have to do the moments at A. So moments at A equals, zero, equals two. B is clockwise, is counterclockwise. So BX clockwise is positive times 1.5 meters. Um, X and Y are at the point. AX and AY not, do not have a moment because they're right at the point. 9.81 is clockwise, so negative. 9.81 kilonewtons. And negative. 23.5 oops uh, there you go 23.5 negative 23.5 times 6 what happened here so it's 91 times 2 minus 23.5 times 6 equals to 0. Mm, this is not very easy to read. Let me go ahead and do this. Okay. Yeah, let's try that better. So, the moment at A equals, let's do it again. B is, is counterclockwise, so positive BX times 1.5. 1.5 is the distance perpendicular to force. 9.81 is going clockwise, so negative 9.81 kilonewtons times the distance, which is 2 meters, minus, because 23.5 is negative, 23.5 is a negative moment, kilonewtons times six meters this is equal to zero so notice that here everything's equal to zero we can just find bx which is equal to 9.81 times 2 plus 23.5 times 6 divided by 1.5 and in summation of forces in x we had bx plus ax equals to zero so if we know Bx, then we know Ax. And that's how you find the forces. Excellent. Um, okay, so actually that's what they did. They said, determine the B is holding the equation about A. That's what we just did. Notice that it's B times 1.5 positive, negative 9.81 kilonewtons times 2 because it's negative moment negative 23.5 because it's a clockwise or negative moment and the answer is 100 
seven kilonewtons. All right, that's perfect. So that's the force that that structure has to support. From there, the engineer will design the width of the elements of the metal components and the amount of welding material that you need and the length, etc. Uh, a Y, well, yeah, just by solving A X and and B, and we know A Y by the system of equations A Y, so we already know that too. Uh, if you want to do moment in B, it's the same thing. The distances are the same with 23.5 and 9.81. The signs are the same, but the only difference is that now you're going to use the force at A and the distance 1.5. And notice that the answer is 107.1, so that's positive, but AX is negative 107. So in fact, that makes sense. The math is working out perfectly fine because it's telling you that this force has to be pulling towards the left, otherwise if it's pulling to the right, the structure is going to rotate. So there's a force of one. So the math will give us the sign. That's why the body, the free body diagram is just to show the force. The direction is given by the system of equations of the rigid body. So in this case, this force, which by the math gave us negative, because if you remember, let's see, if you do the summation of forces, if this is 107 kilonewtons, it's equal on neg to negative AX. Okay, so that's how you get the negative. All right. Where is my mouse? Here it is. Okay, so that is uh, good enough. They're telling us to solve this problem. Let's try it out. So the frame supports part of a roof. Okay, that's good. The cable is 150 kilonewtons, so that is telling me that this force right here, this tension, is 150 kilonewtons. Determine the reaction at E. All right, okay, so let's go ahead and use this figure right here and take it to do another example. All right, so let's do this case right now. So they're asking for the reactions at E. And they're telling us what the tension at F is. It's 150 kilonewtons. So, summation of forces. Summation of forces in X is zero. Summation of forces in Y is zero. What do we have in X? We have EX EX plus and notice that we have a force going like so and A case going like so. Okay. So cosine of this angle. And that angle is the same as this angle. So let's find that angle. We have a triangle with dimensions. 4.5 and hypotenuse we don't know the hypotenuse but we know this side okay so we can do two things we can do tangent inverse of y of x over y 4.5 divided by 6 or we can do the script root of 6 squared so 6 squared plus 4.5 squared, 56.25, and then square root of that, 
7.5. Okay, so this distance right here, 7.5 meters, which is this hypotenuse. So this guy right here has a 90 degree angle and then two angles, alpha and theta. If we want to find theta, it's pretty simple. It's this angle right here. The only thing we have to do is compute the cosine of so theta is equal or better yet. We can do something like so. 4.5 is equal to 7.5 cosine of theta. Okay, so cosine of theta is equal to 4.5 divided by 7.5 and theta is equal to cosine inverse of 4.5 divided by 7.5. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the summation of forces. So this right here, let's fix it. This is EX, which is going in X. And this is, let's say plus, even though one of them is gonna have to be negative, probably EX. So EX plus this force right here in X, which is 150 times cosine of theta but notice that cosine of theta is 4.5 divided by 7.5 so this is equal to zero but this is also equal to ex plus 150 times 4.5 divided by 7.5 is equal to zero that way we don't have to compute the cosine inverse of all that all right, let's do it in Y. The, the summation of forces in Y is EY, which is my support, negative 20 kilo newtons times four. And the force going down, negative 150 sine of um, the angle. So sine of the angle is 6 equals 6 equals 7.5 sine of theta and sine of theta equals 6 divided by 7.5. So 150 kilonewtons times 6 divided by 7.5 and this is negative yep and what other forces we have ey that's it this is equal to zero okay so ex well actually let's do the moment now that we're doing this summations of moments or let's do this moment at e is equal to Okay, this is going to have different distances, therefore the moment is not going to be the same. So first of all, this is positive. So is 1.8 times 3. 1.8 times 3. 5.4. So uh, this is force at B, but we need force at A first. So 1.8 times 4. 7.2 so we have positive 20 kilo newtons times the distance which is 1.8 plus 1.8 plus 1.8 plus 1.8 which is 7.2 meters plus 20 kilo newtons times 5.4 plus 20 kilo newtons times 3.6 plus 20 times 1.8 okay now the force at 
or x is not given any moment because it's aligned with the same axis there's no perpendicular distance but the force at y is and that force is clockwise so negative um that force right there which is 150 times 6 over 7.5 and that's the force that's in kilonewtons times 4.5 okay this is equal to zero very well then the next thing we have to do is just compute stuff so um ex is negative 150 times 4.5 divided by 7.5 and this is 90 it's negative 90 kilonewtons ey is equal to 150 times 6 divided 7.5 plus 20 times 4 or 80 okay perfect so this is um, 200 all right and then the moment is 20 times 7.2 so actually we can fix this a little moment at e equals 20 and then 7.2 plus 5.4 plus 3.6 plus 1.8 minus 200 no what is 150 150 times 6 divided by 7.5 is therefore we have this me plus me plus 20 in this time so this this is equal to zero therefore me is or the moment at a at e sorry is 120.45 minus how much is this 7.2 plus 5.4 plus 1.8 plus 3.6 times 20 is 360 kilonewtons per meter this is 4.5 actually yeah 4.5 is this distance okay 120 times let's do this again 120 times 4.5 equals 540 so this is 540 minus three sixty is one hundred eighty kilo newtons per meter. All right, so we have E X, E Y, and the moment at E. This is telling us that if we come back here, yes, this problem. Okay, so the first thing is telling us which one is the correct answer for E X. So E X and Cosine, well, I don't know, we didn't compute the, the angle, but we did do 150 times 4.5 divided by 7.5. Okay, so that is correct. 
and if you did cosine inverse of that you could have you can get an angle of 36 but be careful because they're doing sine which means that they're doing different angle that we didn't consider so uh, we did this part right here and we got negative 90 as well I hope yeah negative 90 all right then they're asking us for what is the correct answer in y um so it's e y minus okay so this one is wrong because it's not minus minus six divided by 70 yeah this one what's the difference between that one and this one? Oh, wait a second it's not that one it's this one because of the negative yeah it's that one and we got 200 kilo units we're doing good and the moment in around e equals zero so we also got 180 so that's nice so remember how to do the um, body diagram is basically we will learn how to do this later on how to find the gravity center of gravity and that's where you place your force so this one has a force because of the tractor or the front loader and a force to hold the front loader static and not to you know ruin the tire and then break so those forces will have the system in equilibrium yeah just like that so basically they're asking us oh okay they're asking us which one so it's not this one because the forces have to be aiming up and this one is down down up up this would what this one could be this one is down up up down this one also could be this one no this one is not oh this one is not i'm sorry at b it's aiming down and this one is yeah so a is the one correct All right, lastly, they're asking us to um, assume we choose point B for the moment. So from point B, um, we do FA. Oh, this is telling us which one is the correct one. Okay, so if we're doing a uh, point B, we have, first of all, the force in B will not be there, which is true, okay then is clockwise negative is negative so that one is not true because clockwise is gonna give us negative and then we're gonna get positive 2100 so that one is not true that one is not true and then we're gonna get negative fa so negative fa plus positive 2100 and negative 900 yep and the distances are 60 which is correct and 40 and 60 yep and 50 is the yeah and you just compute that number to give us um the force at a so we don't know the force at a which is fine but we know that is equal to zero so in this case moment at b equals zero and they're not asking us to compute the moment they're just asking us to set the equation up that's the difference between this problem and the last in the last problem let's use this as an example in the last problem we wanted to find the moment at e so that has that has to be part of the equation okay and then the setup with the equations will give us everything except for the moment that's what we find in this problem we're not finding the moment we're doing a moment around point b which will give us summation of moments around point B equals zero and the moment at B will give us negative 900 times 50 and plus 2100 now you have to be careful if this is pound force or pound mass but let's say it's pound force so we just focus on how to solve the equation times 40 negative 
f a and this is the unknown times 60 equals 0 so you can solve everything and get f a uh-huh yeah and they're and they're taking this as, as pound force and f a is 650 um, pounds and well, the reality is that it should be divided by four because the tractor has four wheels, not two wheels. But let's say in each axis, in each axis is 325 pounds. Okay, because the tractor has four wheels, so it has to be divided by four.